Hello Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium singles video here on iStarly TV. And today I'm doing a top 5 best legendary Pokemon to use in Regulation G, which is the brand new format, which allows you to use one restricted legendary Pokemon on your Battle Stadium singles team. This is also the same rule set for doubles, but of course doubles is very different. You know, different Pokemon are good in doubles than are good in, in singles and vice versa. So of course I'm focusing on singles. Either way, uh, let's get right into it. As you can see here by my friend who's behind me, who's just kind of on the hunt. Uh, let's just go right to the top five here. And I guess I'll just go, it's not like a true top five where it's like, oh, five, four, three, two, one. You're probably not surprised if you follow this meta at all that Coridon is the most used and probably most powerful Pokemon in Battle Stadium singles, or rather the most powerful Restricted Legend. And we actually have data to back this up, and in fact, I am using the data from the Pokemon Home app, which basically shows the most used Pokemon in Battle Stadium singles uh, for the current format. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this format is very new. It's only been going on for a few days at this point. I think this is like the third, maybe fourth day that this has been going on. So the data is very new. And of course, by the end of the month, it is pretty likely that things change. Maybe some of these Pokemon move up or down. But again, I did want to at least talk about it because it's pretty exciting. And I was kind of wondering what would be good in this format, which legends would shine through. And it's looking like Coridon's taking the top spot. Now, interestingly enough, before I kind of go into more detail here, it's funny because the top three Pokemon are actually non-restricted legends. Coridon is actually the fourth most used Pokemon, but it is again, the most used restricted legendary Pokemon. So what that means is that Fluttermane is number one again. Ogre Pond I think is number two, and I believe Chen Pao is number three, which is really interesting. And I think that's pretty surprising. I was expecting Coridon or Calyrex to be the best, and I was expecting them to be the number one Pokemon because in Sword and Shield, when they did this meta and Zacian was broken in Sword and Shield, uh, Zacian was always the number one Pokemon. It was both the most used Pokemon as well as the most used restricted legend. Um, however, I think what this shows, the fact that like Fluttermane and Ogre Pond are higher than Coridon, it means that Coridon's very good, but that these restricted legendary Pokemon are a little more even. They're a little more equal amongst each other, which is good news, I would say, because it's not like, oh, you should run Coridon or like you need to run Coridon to have success. There's a lot of restricted legendary Pokemon that are also pretty solid as well. So anyways, with that being said, Coridon is number one and for good reason, its ability is really broken. Its ability is Oricalcum Pulse, which is basically Drought, but an upgraded version of Drought. It's Drought, so it summons the sunlight while also boosting Coridon's attack. So Coridon gets a, I think, 33% uh, attack boost in the sun. So basically its attack stat gets boosted by one third when it's in the sun. So not only does it summon the sun, which boosts the power of its fire type moves, weakens water moves, uh, boosts your protosynthesis Pokemon, but it is also stronger when it is in the sunlight. So because of that, people have been running Terra Fire on it. So Terra Fire, I think, is by far the most used Terra type. And as far as good moves, it has the move Collision Course. It has the move Outrage, which is a good, you know, stab dragon move. It has access to Drain Punch, it has Flare Blitz, Flame Charge, U-Turn. There's a lot of really good offensive options for Coridon. And also it has Swords Dance as well, which is another decently common move on Coridon. I think the Choice items are the most used items on it, so Choice Band and Choice Scarf. But I mean, this thing is just a monster. And just as a little bit of a side note, I was, I was kind of collecting a list of obviously the top five most used Restricted Legends. But I'm also probably going to do a video with five underrated legendary Pokemon. So legendaries that are not in the top five that are, I think, still pretty good for one reason or another. Kyogre's like nowhere to be found. Like even like I went through maybe the next like eight or nine legends after the top five. I did not see Kyogre unless I missed it. But 
I think what that tells us, because Kyogre was always a really, really good Pokemon, and in Sword and Shield when they did this meta, Kyogre was, like, one of the best, aside from Zacian. Kyogre is nowhere to be found, and I think a big reason for that is because of Coridon's ability with the sun. Like, you, they send in Kyogre, set up the rain, you can just send in Coridon and set up the sun and just kind of go from there, and, and, and I think the sun is just better, especially with these Protosynthesis Pokemon. Another reason why Fluttermane is the most used Pokemon right now is because it has Protosynthesis. So, you know, you pair Fluttermane with Coridon and it's just like a match made in heaven. Like, you know, Coridon is insanely strong in the sun and then if your Coridon faints, you send in your Fluttermane and your Fluttermane also gets a boost in the sun. So it's kind of nasty. It's kind of, it's kind of gross. Uh, be prepared to face Coridon, be prepared to face Fluttermane and you'll probably have a good day. <laughs> the second most used restricted legendary Pokemon is Calyrex Shadow Rider, which is, I was expecting to be the best, and I think a lot of people going into this meta were probably expecting it to be like the strongest, because it is insanely strong. I think it has like a 160 or 165 base special attack, as well as like, what is it, 200? something speed um i think it's like 150 base speed i could be wrong but i know its speed stat goes to 222 if it's maxed out which is insane so this thing is just gross it's really fast it hits insanely hard and its ability is really good too it's got as one which is the combination of calyrex's unnerve ability and spectrier's grim nay ability Unnerve prevents the enemy from eating berries, and Grim Nay boosts your special attack when you knock out an enemy Pokemon. So it basically shuts down the enemy from using berries, and it gets a, you know, beast boost, basically, when you kill something. So it only gets stronger. This Pokemon is capable of snowballing with ease. Um, you know, Coridon is really, really strong, obviously. And it's a, it's a good offensive Pokemon while also supporting the rest of your team. But Calyrex is just like a steamroll. Uh, if, if you get the ball rolling with Calyrex, it can be very easy to sweep the enemy. And if you are unprepared to face it, it will destroy you. So, you know, its typing is really good offensively and defensively, though it does have its share of weaknesses. It looks like, unsurprisingly, the two best Terra types for it are Fairy, which is a really common one and Fighting, which is another good one. And those two both help Calyrex deal with mainly dark types. And dark types are kind of its its bane. Uh, dark is four times super effective against it. And dark also is immune to Calyrex's psychic type stab and resists the ghost type stab. So the other thing about Calyrex is that it does not have a very deep move pool. It has basically what it needs to be really strong but you're really relying on Terra Blast for coverage. Um, it does also get Draining Kiss for Fairy Stab, or sorry, Fairy type coverage, but Draining Kiss is obviously really weak. So that, if, if that's the best you got for your Fairy type coverage, like obviously that shows that, you know, Calyrex is lacking. So be aware that Calyrex is great, you know, bring some dark types. The funny thing is that the funny kind of unfair thing is, you know, if you have a good solid dark type on your team, Calyrex will, you know, not be that big of a threat to you, but then Coridon is even more of a threat to you because it's a fighting type. So, you know, definitely have a balanced team, but again, Calyrex is insanely powerful. I would not be surprised if it moves up even further. Maybe there could be a world where it could even surpass Coridon in the future, but for right now, I do expect Coridon to be just, it's just really good. And once again, because Coridon, um, you know, can support some of your other Pokemon, like your fire types, your chlorophyll Pokemon, your protosynthesis mons, that makes it that much better. But Calyrex is a very, very good option if you just want something really, really strong. Number three is Miraidon. Miraidon is the third most used restricted legendary Pokemon in the format so far. And I think it's for good reason as well. It's basically the special attacking counterpart to Coridon. And of course, where Coridon summons the sunlight and gets an attack boost, Miraidon summons electric terrain and gets a special attack boost. So its stats are basically the same except more specially oriented rather than physical as you would 
guess. So it has like 135 special attack, 135 speed, and then again, it hits really hard, or it gets a special attack boost, which is really, really strong. Dragon and Electric is also a really solid typing as well. Both of them complement each other pretty solidly. And I mean, defensively, it does have some important weaknesses. You know, it's weak to Fairy, which once again, uh, Fluttermane is very good. Um, it takes neutral damage from Calyrex's Astral Barrage, which is its, you know, si uh, sorry, its ghost type move that's really good. And of course, that move is going to do a lot of damage. But as far as items with Maridon, it's actually interesting. There's a couple of uh, items that are being commonly used right now that can help with either of its defensive stats. The first is Electric Seed, which is an item where you're, if you hold, if you're holding it, um, if you're in Electric Terrain, you consume the item and you get a defense boost. Uh, so obviously, because Coridon itself summons the Electric Terrain it can get its own defense boost from that, which is pretty good. That'll help you against good physical attackers like Coridon, you know, um, it'll help you survive some hits and stuff like that. And the other item that I've seen is Assault Vest, which of course boosts your special defense, but it means that you can only use uh, attacking moves at that point. So a lot of good options for Coridon. You could go offensive, you could go defensive. I think Electric and Dragon is also, you know, I, I talked about how it does have its share of weaknesses, but it is also a solid, defensive typing because it does have a good amount of resistances it resists steel it resists water it resists fire grass uh you know etc i mean electric i mean there's there's a lot of good types that this pokemon can resist and it does hit really hard you know it gets draco meteor electro drift is a great move uh it gets overheat as well for coverage oh wow i'm flying i'm actually flying <laughs> i didn't think that i would actually fly uh, i'm kind of i guess i'm gliding because I'm, I'm going down but either way yeah so maridon's another great pokemon to use i think right now again Coridon just kind of does what maridon does better because also like let's be honest a lot of the protosynthesis the the scarlet paradox pokemon are stronger than most of the Violet Paradox Pokemon, but you know, there's still some good ones in Violet that have Quark Drive as their ability. But also, if you want a strong special attacker, honestly, Calyrex is, is right there. But if you want a, a good special attacker that's pretty well balanced, you know, better balanced than Calyrex because it doesn't have too many common four times weaknesses, uh, Maridon is a good choice. And of course, if you own Pokemon Scarlet, I'm sorry, Pokemon Violet, but not Scarlet. You know, maybe you have a Coridon sitting in your box that you want to try out. This is definitely a solid Pokemon. Might require a little bit more build around than Mari um, sorry, than Coridon and Calyrex, but still a very good option, obviously, because it is number three. Number four is the king of Sword and Shield, Zacian. Uh, Zacian. I'm going to say Zacian, but I am aware that it, it very well could be Zacian. But either way, ooh, this thing's fast. Uh, it is not required for you to have a shiny. I just happen to have one from the Sword and Shield event that they had. Either way, uh, Zacian has dropped a lot. It was, again, the best Pokemon in Sword and Shield for good reason. It was broken, but it has since been nerfed with Scarlet and Violet very sadly or very happily, depending on who you ask. Zacian's ability, Intrepid Sword, now only triggers once per battle. So what Intrepid Sword does is if you're holding the Rusted Sword, you turn into your sword mode or sword form, crown, crown form I think it's called, which gives you a stat boost so your stats become even higher, your attack stat is really high, your speed stat is really high. On top of that, every time you entered the battlefield, you would get a attack boost, just plus one attack. Uh, and that happened again every single time. So if you switched out, when you switch back in later, you would get the attack boost again. However, now they have nerfed it so that it, again, it only triggers once per battle. So if you send in your Zacian early and you get your attack boost and then maybe the enemy switches in a Pokemon that can resist all of your moves and you're forced to switch out, when you go back in later, you will not get that attack boost anymore so that is a notable nerf and it it really shows like i do think coridon's really really good i do think miridon's really really good so you know it is possible that coridon would have still given zacian a run for its money even even if zacian had not been nerfed but again um i think it was much deserved to get a nerf because otherwise uh this could very well end up being the, the best pokemon in the meta once again but Zacian is still really, really strong. What it has going for it, again, in the crown form is really good speed. I think its speed is on par with Calyrex. I think Zacian might be a little slower. Really good attack, a really high attack stat. 
Um, if you get the Intrepid Sword boost, it's an even higher attack stat, which is insanely massive. It also learns Swords Dance, so you could boost that even further. I think that's a big reason why Zacian is still up there, because it can just keep boosting its attack stat really high. And its coverage is really solid. It's a Steel and Fairy type, both of which are really good types for offensive purposes. And it does learn some really solid coverage moves. It learns stuff like Close Combat. I think it learns Wild Charge. Learns Ice Fang if you need it, so it has a lot of options to hit a lot of things. I do believe it also gets Crunch, so you can kind of hold your own against Calyrex, which is pretty nice as well. So, you know, it used to be the case where in uh, Sword and Shield, it was everyone pretty much bringing Zacian, and you just brought some Pokemon that could counter it, and that, that led to weird things being being top tier, like Ditto and, and Quagsire. But this, this time around, you know, it's not quite as... It's not required to you know, beat Zacian because again, there are other Pokemon that are really good right now who are probably better. But Zacian is still a really good Mon if you have one sitting in your boxes from Sword and Shield, or maybe if you just really like it, it's really solid. Also again, with um, with Fluttermane being so prevalent, Zacian's really good against it because it can take some good damage from its moves while also doing super effective damage with the Steel type move. Uh, and again, it has really good coverage. So as long as you build your team so that you know what your Zacian needs to counter, it, it can be a, an excellent Pokemon, and if you want to try to build a team that can kind of disrupt the enemy, maybe get some knockouts early, and then go into Zacian late game and clean up with that attack boost, that's a really good strategy as well. So Zacian, still very, very good, though not quite as good as it once was. And number five, the, the fifth most used restricted legendary Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Regulation G is Ho-Oh. And this one honestly surprised me. I mean, Ho-Oh is a really good Pokemon, but there are a couple other restricted legends that I expected to be higher than Ho-Oh, and that's not the case. Ho-Oh is very, very good. Once again, I have an awesome shiny one. I, I shiny hunted this one from uh, the gold version on the, what is it called? The... On, on DS, you know how they released gold version and crystal version and all that. Either way, <laughs> uh, beautiful shiny ho -Oh. And ho -Oh is, you know, a great Pokemon. I know I did some battles uh, with on, on Pokemon Showdown leading up to this meta to try out some teams, to try out some Pokemon. And I did build a ho -Oh team, and ho -Oh was pretty solid. I was running Choice Band, although it looks like the highest, uh, or sorry, the most used nature for ho -Oh is actually Impish, which boosts your defense and lowers your special attack. So people are playing ho -Oh a lot more bulky. Uh, I think some of the most common partners for ho -Oh right now are like stall-oriented Pokemon. So it's very possible people are playing ho -Oh as something of a stall mon, which is very annoying, but you know, ho -Oh is very, very good. Uh, the things that ho -Oh has going for it are a really high special, uh, sorry, special defense stat. I think it's like 154 base special defense. So whether you're invested in special defense or not, you actually take hits from special attackers, AKA Fluttermane and Calyrex, really, really well. Um, Ogre Pond's another great Pokemon in the meta right now, and Ho-Oh is great against most versions of Ogre Pond. Ho-Oh's typing is also decent against Coridon. It resists fighting, it resists fire. Uh, it takes neutral damage from Dragon, so yeah, I mean, Ho-Oh is just in a really good position right now. It, it just feels like a Pokemon where it's not as, like, overtly, like, blatantly strong as all of the other ones I've named so far, but again, all of those things I listed, all of those, those strengths that it has going for it really help it, really make it just a very good Pokemon in the meta right now. Kind of feels like a little bit of an anti-meta pick, because again, it has a good matchup against most of those other restricted legends that I just went over. So yeah, I mean, ho is an awesome Pokemon. I know it's a lot of people's favorites. Personally, I am a huge Gen 2 fan, so I'm really happy to see some Gen 2 love. Is that, that's not a shiny, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so ho is doing great for itself. It also has Regenerator, which is, of course, an amazing ability. Uh, of course, it recovers your health every time you switch out by 33%, which is really great. And I think the most common Terra type for ho right now is actually Grass, which I think makes sense because it can co cover your weaknesses decently well. You know, with Kyogre not really in the meta at the moment, you know, I think that gives ho a, a really nice chance to shine. So, yeah, and there's, there's ho for you. I mean... Um, beautiful Pokemon, great Pokemon, and that's the top five overall. So let me know in the comments what you thought about this top five. Are there any big surprises that, that you saw here? Was there any Pokemon that you thought would be higher 
that is not up here? Is there a Pokemon that you thought would be lower that you're surprised by? Um, what do you think of our new Coridon Overlords? <laughs> Let me know all of that in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching. Please do leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. Like I said, I think the next video I'll do will be five underrated restricted legendary Pokemon in this meta. So if you have any suggestions for that one, let me know. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Team Ho all the way.